Good morning, everybody. We're glad you're here. We're going to start off with something a little peppy because we look like you need it. Yeah. <laughs> I know I need it uh, after a busy yesterday. So uh, let's let's see. This is amazing grace. <laughs> I told the girls, I said, y'all stand in front of me to uh, to cover me up while I'm sitting on that box back here. And Faith said, we, we could, we're not big enough to cover you up. <laughs> she said something like that. She said, oh yeah, she said, you are so fat. No, no, she didn't say that. She did not. You are our preacher man. All right, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It was all just nice. It was all nice up here. <laughs> all right, let's pray. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that we can laugh and just have a good time in your house. Thank you for the many families and individuals who are here today. God, you brought us here for a reason. There's some reason that you wanted us to be in this service on this day. So, God, we just ask that we would listen with our hearts, that we would open our, our minds and our hearts to you, and Lord, well, we would just listen as you speak to us through the songs, through the words that are said, through the prayers that are offered, through the special, through everything that's done. We just pray that um, you would be lifted up. God, we love you and we thank you for this um, opportunity to just worship you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated. We are so glad you're here. We want to welcome you here to the service, and we just pray that God blesses you for for being here. And uh, we want to welcome everybody on online. I just got a card from someone who um, 
I think she lives in Houston now. Uh, she used to be live here a long time ago. Ann Glowski, I don't know if any of you remember her. Mm -hmm. uh, but she uh, was talking about the memories and how she listens on the, uh, every day to our, uh, or every Sunday to our service. And I just thought, wow, that, that's amazing. So uh, anyway, we, we welcome all of you here. Um, first of all, Debbie and I would like to say thank you very much for uh, those of you that sent cards and that prayed for us, that gave us best wishes, that showed up yesterday for our 50th uh, wedding anniversary. It was so nice. It was just perfect. And, and we thank you for your presence and you y'all thinking of us. Uh, it, it was a re really special day. Um, we, we had to learn to let our kids do everything. And that's a hard lesson, you know. Sometimes you don't want to let go. You want to say, well, I'll, you want me to do this? Or you want me to find that? No, Dad, go sit down. <laughs> Leave us alone. We'll take care of it. And they did. They really did a great job. So um, thank you all very much. And we had a wonderful day yesterday, a very emotional day. Um, also, we want to remind you that we've got a few things starting up uh, now in January. We want you to be looking forward to that. First of all... Our uh, Wednesday night classes begin uh, this this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, which is, I guess, the 13th. Is that right? Yes. The 10th. 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 It starts on the 10th. I'm sorry. <laughs> it starts on the 10th. Uh, this, this coming Wednesday, we're getting back to our uh, children and youth and middle school classes. Uh, it's going to be a little, a uh, little special for our older classes. We're going to, they're going to be studying uh, biblical citizenship, and it's also an opportunity maybe for some of you adults to, um, to sit down on that. We did that earlier last year, but uh, some of you didn't get to come. It wasn't a good time, whatever it was. Uh, if you can come on Wednesday nights at six o'clock and meet over here in the old fellowship hall. Uh, with the youth and middle school, you are more than welcome to come. Or if you came to just one or two last time and you want to really get the full uh, effect of it, they're going to slow it down a little bit and take it in smaller chunks. And so uh, I really think you'll enjoy that. So Biblical Citizenship is going to be meeting on Wednesdays over here. Um, this Wednesday, uh, we will, the adults will have prayer meeting in here, those of you that are not in that class. <clears throat> And then our other classes will start in their respective places. So uh, don't forget about that. Now, on the 17th, though, uh, that's two Wednesdays from now, Wednesday week, uh, Theron will be starting a study in here on Wednesday nights with our adults called uh, Jesus and Peter. Uh, it's a study that he has done, and uh, he's going to start that for us on Wednesday nights. He's going to do it in Sunday school starting on the 14th. Is that right? Golly, I got it. <laughs> on the 14th, uh, back here in the Sunday school class, that's going to start um, um, this Jesus and Peter. And then on Wednesdays, he'll be doing it again for those of you that can't come on Sunday mornings. So uh, we'll, we'll try to, to cover everybody. So. Remember those things, write those down, be a part of those. All of those are really, really quality stuff going on. And we're just, we're just so proud uh, of the studies that we're having on Wednesday nights. It's great. It's great. All right. Um, let's see. Ladies, ladies Bible study, is that starting back? Yes, on this? the 15th. Thank you. 15th. 15th. On the 15th. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Not this Wednesday. Not tomorrow, but the 15th. Uh, Monday Men's starts back. On the 8th, it starts back tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, that's 6 o'clock. And uh, men's breakfast this Saturday. This Saturday coming up. Yes. All right, men's breakfast, best breakfast in town. Uh, it's going to be this this uh, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. That's true. And we're we're going through. Uh, Je going through Acts. Through Acts, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of something else, Genesis. But we're going through Acts, and uh, so. Be a part of that. Come on, come on uh, Sunday morning. We have good fellowship and good grace. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> now that y'all are thoroughly confused, 
<laughs> Later on, come up and I'll try to try to get it clear for you. All right. All right. Anything else? Any other? All right. Y'all look so good today. Y'all look so great. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, if our children and uh, ushers would come at this time, we'll go ahead and get started. Also, I want to just uh, let you know we're going to have a uh, dedication uh, part of our service in just a little while uh, uh, before the, before the uh, praise team comes to sing and before we have our preaching, but uh, just want you to be in prayer for that. Uh, I kind of threw it out there for anybody that would like to do that, and I only have one family, so uh, I think it'll be maybe a, a, a catalyst for others that might want to dedicate their children to the Lord, and uh, it'll be a it'll be a, a special time. So uh, be in prayer about that. All right, let's let's pray. Larry, would you? Dear yeah, Father, we come to this morning to thank you for the group of people that are here. Take care of the ones that are sick and that are couldn't, dear Lord. As we start the new year, all right, as we have uh, people traveling today and and throughout the week, dear Lord, keep them safe on the road. As Brother Stan brings your message to us today, dear Lord, help us to apply that again. Thank you for the, all the blessing you give us, but help us touch somebody with that message so we can further your kingdom as we always say. Take care of us, dear Lord. Thank you for our pastor. Thank you for his family, and thank you for this church. We Amen. love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, boys and girls. Wow, everyone's back today. It's so exciting to see. Oh, look, Mr. B. Oh, sorry. She's precious. She's at school a lot, too, because her mom works at the school. I love seeing her. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, friend. Okay, good morning. Um, we are going to talk about obedience. How do you feel about obedience? When you hear the word obedience, how do you feel? You don't like it. Huh? <laughs> what? Help my mom. Oh, that is being obedient when you help your mom. That's right. Very good. Thing. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about a different kind of obedience. Usually with children, everyone says, you know, they go to the commandments and they go, children, obey your parents. And that's what we're talking about. But today we're talking about being obedient to God. A bunch of us have been talking about that over this past year. The Lord's really been impressing upon us to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And, you know, if Jesus is in your heart then the Holy Spirit lives in you, and you need to be obedient to what he's telling you, right? Yeah. So we're going to read some scriptures this morning about that, okay? <laughs> uh, let's start with the number one is Luke eleven twenty eight. Who's got that? You. He said, rather bless those are those who hear the word and of God and keep it. And, and that was Jesus talking. And the scripture right before that was, oh, blessed is the, the woman who bore you and gave birth to you. And Jesus said, oh, no. Not that she's not blessed. Yes, she is. But he was talking about more, more so is the person who hears my word and does it. And that's like, wow. You know. Okay. Uh, the num n number two is John 8, 47. Who's got that? And that's another red letter. That's Jesus talking. The one who is from God, God listens to God's words. This is why you don't listen, because you are not from God. So if you're of God, you're going to do what God says, right? All right. 14, 15. If you love me, obey my commands. Okay. All right. And now we need John 14, 23. 
Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My Father will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. That's a way. Okay, now 1 John 2, 3 through 6. We know, we know that we have to come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says I know him but does not want, does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, thus his life is truly made complete in him. This is how we know. We are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Boys, I don't need to say anything else. Do I? Jesus said it all. Okay. Um, just one little thing. Henry Blackaby, which you used to know him, didn't you know? He said, Obedience is the outward expression of your love for God. Are you willing to obey him and show your love for God by keeping his commandments? Obedience is the best way. And a thought for today. Do not willingly put yourself in situations where you might easily be tempted and disobey God. Mm. Well, it hit me in between your eyes, too. I thought I had to share it with you guys this morning. Would you like to pray for us this morning? God, thanks for today, everyone here. God, thanks for the people that are sick, for them to be healed. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. You will pass through deep waters, but I will be with you. You will pass through the rivers, but their waters will not sweep over you. You will walk through fire, but you will not be burned. You, the flames, will not harm you. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you did for us today. I pray that you just heal everybody in the hospital and you just heal the um, people that are sick. And amen. Amen. That's cheating. Good job. She will be preaching next week. It's on the schedule. <laughs> that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Well, um, we thought about having a, a dedication time for children, uh, for little children, and um, we had one, one couple that said they were interested in that, and uh, so I want to ask Taylor and Dylan if y'all would come up here with Oakland, and in fact, just, just bring the whole family up here, that'd be good, just bring the whole family up here. We're going to have a dedication time, um, and you know, a lot of uh, a lot of churches have different ways of doing this, and Baptists don't have any specific way. I'll just that. Don't have any specific way of doing this, but we we want to uh, just recognize that this this family is very much interested. And bringing their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, which is very admirable, Amen. and we are so proud of them. Just like, just like many of you, all of you are trying to do your best. But they want to come before the church today and dedicate this little baby. Both of their younger ones have accepted Christ, and we had the privilege of baptizing them. 
And so that uh, that's really been that part has really been taken care of for them. But Copeland, they they want the very best for her future, and they want her uh, they want as a family to dedicate her to the Lord. And so the way we're going to do this is I'm going to repeat some I'm going to say some words, and I want you to repeat after me. Uh, hopefully this is in your heart. <laughs> I think it is. I know it is. Um, but I want you to repeat after me, the parents, if y'all will do this, okay? We promise, we promise to raise Copeland, to raise Copeland in, the church, in the church and in the knowledge, in the knowledge and, presence of God, and presence of God, thanking God, thanking God for his help. For his help. Amen. Amen. Y'all give him a hand for that. All right, but you know what? I think we as a church have a responsibility, too. We have, a, we have a responsibility to love them and to be there for them. And so I'm going to ask you to repeat after me these words. As a, as a congregation, as a, as, a, as a church body. So I, wa I want you to repeat after me, okay? Real loud so they'll hear it, okay? We promise, we promise as, believers, as believers to be the church, to be the church that God wants us to be. To love and support Love these, parents these parents and families, and families. With, the help of God with the help of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Isn't that great? Y'all yes. give yourselves a hand. Right now. I, I really hope and pray that you meant that because it's very important. It does take a church family. It's, it's really hard by yourself. You can do it. You know, you can do it. You can stay close to the Lord, but it's really, really hard. When you have the support of a church family, it's so much easier. And we just want you to know we love you and we're so glad that you're a part of this family and uh, that you're doing right by your kids. Amen. Let me pray for you, okay? Father, I just I just thank you for Dylan. I thank you for Taylor. And I thank you for these beautiful children. God, you are definitely working in their lives. And I'm so thankful for that. And God, I just pray that you would continue to bless them, you would continue to guide them, you would continue to show them the things that they need to do, and the kind of person that they need to be, and the example that they need to be. And God, I just pray that you would protect them from that old devil, and that he would be gone from their lives and our lives, and Father, that uh, they would just be able to enjoy all the blessings that you have for God's people. Father, we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God is good, isn't he? All the time. All the time. All right, now if any of you are interested in doing that, we're gonna we'll, we may do that again sometime soon, maybe maybe at Easter or some special time. So let me know about your children. And they don't have to be, you know, in your arms babies. Uh, they can be young ones that you haven't had an opportunity to just formally commit them to the Lord. And uh, and I know you can do that at home, and I know that you've done that. I know that you've given them to the Lord. Uh, but but if you'd like to do something like that, just let me know, and we'll, we'll do that again real soon. And we are so blessed to have so many little babies Amen. making noise. And Amen. believe me, I hear that noise, but I don't mind that noise at all. Amen. 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 I mean, I don't mind that at all. I love that. I love that. All right. Uh, okay. Ready? We're ready. right now. She's in the hospital. Um, she doesn't have any blood family. 
She has no mother living, no father living, no brother, aunt, sister, cousin. She has literally no one. And she's moved to another state, so she doesn't even have friends that are close. So anyway, I have been lifting her up, and I had asked her to try to watch church this morning because she's in the hospital, and I don't know if she'll be able to figure out how to do that on her phone, but that's my prayer. Um, but I just want to lift her up this morning, and, and anyone else that's feeling that way, maybe just feeling like you have no one. So, Father God, I just I dedicate this song because it talks about what a good, good father that you are. And Lord, I just pray that even if Nancy is not watching this right now, Lord, that you will speak that to her. You will speak that, that you are giving her your peace and your comfort. And that she knows that even though she doesn't have living relatives, Father God, that you are always there with her. You're always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Father, you have given her shelter and food and warmth and nurses and doctors and companions to take care of her and you do that for all of us you give us our daily bread every single day you give us exactly what we need and so father i just pray that she or anyone else here today who's feeling alone or that they don't have people that care for them or love them that they know you are their father and you're such a good good father we just thank you for that
worship.
starting back on our Christmas program uh, a few weeks ago, but we had such an amazing turnout on Wednesday night. I thought, well, we won't have very many on Sunday, and then we had a whole lot more on Sunday. It was, it was just a, an amazing time. And then all of the, the things through Christmas, you know, our Christmas Eve gathering and uh, all the things that happened there and New Year's Day. It was just a wonderful time of year. And although we're, we're talking about a little child that was born, we also must uh, admit uh, and think about the majesty of God, how holy and high and how majestic God the Father is. And so this little chorus that we're going to sing, a little song we're going to sing, I want you to sing along with us, talks about that majesty. And I want you to, to, to do your best to just sing it to the top of your lungs to Him. Because He is worthy. He is worthy.
praise you and thank you for it. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Testing, one, two. Okay, we're done. You can hear me now. All right, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It's probably a familiar verse to you, but uh, um, I was thinking about what the Lord wanted me to share this morning. And, uh, of course, we had, we had all of this stuff going on this week with the 50th wedding anniversary and uh, calling people... Uh, and talking to people that were thinking about coming or maybe come or couldn't come and uh, it's just been it's been a very very emotional week uh, for us and for me and and uh, I kept I kept thinking okay Lord you know after Saturday comes Sunday what do you want me to preach on <laughs> you know I can't just focus on Saturday and I really did pray about it I thought about it for a long time and I finally decided uh, I, I pray with the Lord's prompting uh, that I just want to share my testimony and just just share a little bit. I know some of you have heard it before, uh, maybe maybe uh, a couple of times or heard parts of it. Uh, but um, many of you uh, have not, and so um, I, I just I just want to share my testimony today. I really don't know where this is going to go. But we'll let the Lord take care of that. Amen. When I was young, we uh, I didn't go to church. My mom had been raised in church. My dad had not. My mother's uh, uh, side of the family, especially my mother's mother, my grandmother, was a very, very strong Pentecostal uh, Christian. I mean, she was she was all in. Uh, Carrie, she was she was one of those all in ones. I remember her praying at night when we would stay with her. I remember her praying at night beside her bed. We'd be on the couch or something, you know, uh, and you know, give us our little bed. And and I remember her praying. I remember her praying as I was a little little boy, and it had such an impression upon me. It left such an impression on me. Uh, just just that that she would do that, and she didn't pray. You know, God bless this bunch as we eat our lunch. Amen. That was, it wasn't that kind of prayer. It was one of those long prayers, you know, about praying for everybody and everything. And then sometimes she would be praying in tongues, and I was just like, uh, it, it, I didn't understand it. I didn't really know what was going on, but I knew that it was other worlds. I knew that it was of God. It wasn't of this world. And it was, it was, it was amazing. So I. That, that was on one side of my family. My mother was raised in the church. My dad, on the other hand, his family was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three aunts that are younger than me, okay? So, um, I don't know why I said that, but I mean, you know, that, that just kind of sets it all up, you know? Uh, they, they, my, my grandfather on my father's side uh, he was a an alcoholic. He was so much fun to be around, <laughs> but he was an alcoholic. I mean, he 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 drank a lot, and uh, uh, usually he did that outside of the house or at the bar or something like that. I remember going to visit sometimes, and we would have to go and pull him out of the bar to come and visit with us. I'd go with my dad. He'd say, "You wait in the car. I'll go get my dad, my grandfather," and he'd he'd lead him out, you know. And, and he, he would go home and we'd get to visit with him, you know. And uh, that, that was that side of the family. So what happened, I guess, when my mom and my dad got together, they just, they just didn't go to church. They, it wasn't a priority in their life. It, they, never, they never went to church. I had one older brother that's eight years older. And then uh, along came me, and then two years later, my younger brother. But... Um, they uh, they didn't take us to church. They they were good people, hard working people. My dad was a workaholic. Uh, he was a good man. He taught me about hunting and fishing. I'll never be able to thank him enough for that. He uh, he uh, you know he always impressed upon us you know to work hard. Whatever you do, do it really hard. Do it really well. 
And that's the kind of guy that he was. But uh, they didn't go to church. So as a teenager, a very early teenager, uh, I went to a revival with a friend of mine. I, uh, I had been to church a few times before, but that that, that I heard that night in that revival was, was life-changing. It, was, it wasn't that it was that spectacular. I don't really remember what the sermon was about, but I remember the invitation. And I remember the feeling in my heart that God, I needed to do something, that I was, you know, that I needed God. And, and now I realize it was that well, I was lost and I needed, I needed that salvation. And so um, I, I went one night and uh, the friend that took me to the revival with him, uh, I mean, he, he, when the invitation started, he looked at me and his eyes were about that big and he went down. And I was sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> but he, when he came back up there and we got in the car, we, and I'm, ta I'm talking about, I was heading down probably not a very good path. Because we, we had uh, put a bunch of beer in the back of his car before we went to the revival. And we thought, I mean, I'm talking 14 years old. 13, 14 years old. He was, he was older. He was driving. But we went out in the country and he took that beer and he opened every can and he poured them every one out. And I just thought, man, what a change. What a change in his life. And so the next night we went to the revival. And when the invitation was given, I had that feeling again. And I thought, well, you know, my big-eyed friend, he went down there last night. I, maybe I need to go down there. So I went down. I remember the preacher saying, I know you've heard preachers say this a thousand times. If you'll take the first step toward God, God will carry you the rest of the way. You remember those? Preachers used to say that a lot. And so, and, but it was true. He said that, and it was true. I, I stepped out in the aisle, and I don't even remember going down the aisle. But I remember being at the altar praying. There were so many people there that the usher, uh, the uh, counselors were talking to, and uh, they weren't talking to me. So a friend of mine that I would go to school with, who was a Christian, he came down and he shared with me, you know, you just need to ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you. He just very simply, he didn't quote any scriptures or anything like that. I don't know that he knew them. But he just said, you need Jesus. This is what you, this is what you need. And so in my simple understanding that night, I asked Jesus to become my Lord and Savior. I've kind of, you know, I fleshed that out later, but that was the point. That was the point. The scripture that I'm having you look at, it says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are, be, are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Isn't that a great verse? That, that became a, a, a watchword for me. That became a verse for me. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so from that point forward, God changed my life. God changed the direction of my life. God changed my thinking. God changed my destination. I knew simply because I had trusted Jesus, that I was going to go to heaven someday. And uh, I, I hadn't been to church a lot. I hadn't been to Sunday school or anything like that. I didn't really know a lot. But I knew that I knew Jesus and that uh, uh, Jesus knew me. And that was enough. And friends, that's maybe what you need is to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You may have been playing church. You may have been thinking about it. You may have had somebody talk to you about it before and you haven't done it for whatever reason. This may be the time when you need to say, yes, I want Jesus to come into my life and save me. Well, things happen real fast. Uh, we were in a little church outside of Gatesville and, and uh, I started going to church there. I had gone a few times before, but I started going to church there and it was a wonderful uh, experience because it was just like revival was happening. God was moving, uh, especially among the young people. We would we would we would go to the park not to play or, or hike or anything like that. We'd go to the park and have Bible study. And we would we would be sitting around after church on Sunday night and we'd say, What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And we said, Well let's go up to the steakhouse outside of Gatesville and let's see who we can 
who's sitting there and let's go up to them and let's tell them about Jesus. I mean, that was, it was that kind of revival. Okay. It wasn't that we were better than anybody else, but we did that. And you can't believe how many bleary eyed cowboys were sitting there drinking their coffee at night. And we'd come and sit down in the booth with them and, and start talking to them about Jesus. You, you get some funny responses, <laughs> but that's what we would do. And so everything moved real fast. We had a revival at that church, uh, you know, a, a, a scheduled revival, and, and revival was already going on, but we had a scheduled revival, and there were about four of us that surrendered to preach, four different guys that surrendered to preach. Uh, was it four or five? Anyway, there were only two that God, you know, that they stayed with it, me and another guy, um, uh, who was a youth minister? He he uh, went on to become a preacher. Uh, there was only two of us that went on to follow God's leading in their life. Uh, I surrendered to preach. I didn't really know what that meant. The pastor there at the time was having classes with us and trying to get us to you know figure out what God wanted us to do and. I didn't really know, but I just knew God had something that he wanted me to do. And friends, there's something that God has for every one of you to do. Amen. There's a scripture that my mother got for me. I have it hanging on the wall in a, in a picture frame uh, that I'm going to forget exactly how it goes, but maybe I will. It says, uh, in Psalm 1914, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And that became another scripture in my life. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I started uh, pursuing that. Well, God, what do you want me to do? I had some opportunities. The preacher that was there at that church at that time uh, said, you know, you need to get out there and you need to do it, you know. And I had I had a few opportunities to preach, kind of fill in at some of the small churches <coughs> that were around Gatesville. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> I feel so sorry for them. <laughs> I think about I think about what I said. I remember going somewhere and I'd read this wonderful sermon out of a sermon book. It was just awesome, and I thought, man, that's what I need. That's what I need to preach, and and so I got I got that book, and I, I I thought maybe I can get through it, you know, just kind of referring to that book. My my mind went blank. I mean, I just I froze up. So I just I read that sermon. It, it took about maybe ten minutes, and I had a prayer, and uh, that was it. And I thought, oh, well, they didn't ask me to come back anymore. But... <laughs> But God continued to work in my life. God continued to work. They were real nice. They were, oh, you're so sweet. You know, you're never going to make it as a preacher, but you're sweet. <laughs> uh, that was while I was in high school, okay? That was while I was in high school. I graduated when I was 17 years old. In the summer of my uh, of the year that I graduated in 19... 72, the dark ages back then. Uh, there was a little church outside of Gatesville. I, they obviously hadn't heard of my other escapades in the other churches. They said, we want you to come and fill in for us. I'd gotten a little better by then. And uh, so I went out there, and there were eight people in church. Eight people. Three of them were... Debbie, myself, and a friend of mine. So there was really five. There were five people in church. And I don't know if they, the rest of the church knew it. There wasn't much of the rest of the church. But I don't know if the rest of the church knew it. But they asked me to become their interim pastor. They said, we want you to become our interim pastor. You did such a good job. We want you to come back. And so I started preaching there at Levita. A few months later, they asked me to... They said, would you consider becoming our pastor? And I said, do you know that I'm just 17 years old? And, uh, and that didn't matter to them. They, made, they called me as their pastor. Um, they ordained me first because I hadn't been ordained yet. So they ordained me, and I became their pastor. 
and uh, they're part-time pastor. And so we drove from Temple to Levida, just outside of Gatesville, every every Sunday. And uh, I was there for four years. We grew from five to about thirty-five. <laughs> then we were having about thirty, thirty-five in, in church. Uh, I remember the last Sunday we were there, we had like 35 in Sunday school. So, uh, okay, that was four years there. And then in the meantime, the home church, which was Debbie's home church, uh, she uh, was also, uh, her grandparents went there and, and all of that stuff. When, the, when they lost their pastor, they, they came to me and they said, you know, would you consider becoming the pastor at First Baptist Flat? Y'all know where Flat is? Anybody know where Flat is? It's between the mound and the grove. <laughs> really? That's, those three towns are right there. <laughs> anyway, they asked me to become their pastor and I was like so scared, you know. And I remember going in view of a call, preaching a sermon and... Uh, and then they, you know, met later and said, we, we want you to become our pastor. So I, we went there. Uh, we had our oldest uh, child, Deanna, while we were at Levita. We had Daniel, our middle child, while we were at Flat. And so we were there, we were there for four years. Now, i got to back up and tell you about Debbie. I, I, in high school, I worked for this man named Travis Wall. It's Debbie's grandfather. And I did all kinds of stuff for him. I worked with cattle with him. I, I <coughs> built fences, uh, drove the tractor, plowed the fields, hauled hay, whatever, whatever he wanted me to do. Uh, that's what I did. And every weekend, there was a little green car would come on Friday uh, from Temple, and you could see ahead, you know, about <laughs> this far above the steering wheel. And I was like, and when I saw that little face, <laughs> she fell madly in love with me. No. <laughs> it became very interesting to go work for Travis Hall. And uh, we, we started hanging out. We started dating. We, uh, was it junior year or sophomore year? Junior year. Uh, we, we, uh, I knew that I was in love. I don't know if she knew yet, but I knew I was in love, and it was a real thing. I was really mature for 16 years. <laughs> really mature. Or at least I thought I was. But anyway, we, uh, we met, and we started dating, and we started hanging out together, and uh, started uh, college together at Temple Junior College, went about a year and a half, and I told her, I said, if we're going to do this thing, <coughs> let's do it. And so she started crying, and I never did understand that. I don't know if she was crying because she didn't want to or because she did want to, but she started just crying, and uh, but anyway, <laughs> we went and told her, her parents, and we uh, made plans, and we got married in between. I, you know, in the Christmas break time, that's why it was January the 5th when we got married. And uh, that was 50 years ago, and we haven't looked back since. God is good all the time. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful trip. It hadn't always been perfect. You know, we got a lot of cards yesterday, and they said, you're just like, you know, you're our example. And I thought, no. <laughs> Look at somebody else. Uh, but hopefully we did some things right and God did a lot of good things in our life and gave us a wonderful family and all that. Anyway, I pastored at Platt. Um, we, um, we started, uh, thinking about, I, I finished college. I had some help finishing college. That's a whole other story. But I, I finished, we finished college at Mary Horton Baylor. And um, I thought, you know, you know, maybe God has something else for me. Maybe there's somewhere else I need to go. And so we, we started thinking about that. And I told a few of my friends and a few of our pastor friends. And anyway, our name was submitted here 
uh, at, uh, at Bremont. And uh, they came over there and listened to me at flat. And uh, then uh, later they called me and said, we want you to come and meet with the church and come in view of a call. Y'all don't know what that means because I've been your pastor for 43 years. <laughs> That's what churches do sometimes, okay? But um, I came over here in view of a call and, and preached for them Sunday morning, Sunday night. And uh, we had two kids, you know, and... Um, I just, we came over here before I preached and just to see the town. And we drove around and we both looked at one another and said, Mayberry. <laughs> it's just like Mayberry. You know, it's just a little old town. And, but, but it was like, this, this is great, you know. And uh, so we, um, we preached and they, they, uh, they asked us to come as their pastor. I remember Douglas was little bitty thing running around at that time and uh, his mom and dad uh, bringing him to church and I remember Douglas being there. Was anybody else there on that, that night? Nobody. The only one, Douglas. You're the only one. And you don't remember it probably. <laughs> you were little. <laughs> Do you remember it? Okay. Well, we came here, and uh, it's been uh, it's been a journey. We've had some good years, and we've had I'll just say it we've had some bad years. We've had some good people that supported us completely, and we've had some that seemed to fight against us every step of the way. We had good financial years, a few of them. But most of them were struggling financial years. Most of them were struggling. But I want to tell you something. God is faithful all the time. He never lets us down. We used to think, you know, I'll just tell this story. Debbie was going back to school. She went back to school and she turned in her financial information and they called her into the office. You know, that's never good. <clears throat> even in college they called her into the financial office and they said listen we got your information here and you qualify for this and this and this but there's no way that you can raise a family of four on what you're making and she said we had five at that time Timothy was born while we were here so she, there's no way you can raise a family of five a family of three kids and two parents there's no way you can there's no way you can live off of the money you're making. We said, Yes, we do. And they didn't ask us, but if they would have asked us that how that's possible, well, I would have said it was all God. God always took care of us. And sometimes the church did the very best that they could do. That those that time they were doing the very best that they could do. And there were other times when they they didn't do the best they could do. There were sometimes on Mondays when some of those mean people that I talked about would say some things to me on Sunday. There were some Mondays that I were I was making calls all over the state, like get me out of this place. But I'd like to think if there's anything that can be said about my testimony, about our testimony, it's not just me, about our testimony, because I couldn't have done it without her. About our testimony is that we are, we persevere. We, we hang in there, you know. We, 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 just, keep go, we just keep going. And, and it's not, I'm, I'm not trying to bring any attention to me. I'm just saying for us, that's what God wanted us to do. He wanted us to hang in there, to be, uh, to be a solid, I don't know, a foundation, uh, something for people to hold on to and, and know that I was always going to be there. I've had people in the community tell me, Brother Stan, uh, and, th and I know they're lying when they say this, they said, you just look the same when you came here. You're just the same as now as you were when you came here. You're just the same. And I said, thank you. I, I, I like to think that, that that's true, that we, 
We have hung in there. We have tried. We've persevered. We've gone through hard times, big times, low times. We've fought. We have gloried in victory. We've taken hundreds of kids to camp. We have uh, gone on so many mission trips that we can't count them all. We have hung in there all these years. And so I, I think that's, that's what it means there in Psalms when it says that the words of my mouth, preaching, teaching, doing what God wants us to do, the meditation of my heart. I finished seminary. Um, I finished college at Flat. I finished seminary while I was here in Bremont. Uh, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. But I want to share with you a couple of verse, uh, passages. And I'm, I'm reading from the Living Bible, I'm sorry, I mean the uh, Message Bible. So it may be a little different from what's on the screen. I'm sorry, I should have told you that. Can you change that? All right, all right, y'all read along, or maybe it would be better if you just listen. Because it's a little different in the Message Bible than it is in the NIV that I usually read. But in 1 Timothy 6, 1 Timothy 6, <clears throat> it says this, but you, Timothy, man of God, Paul was talking to Timothy, but I think he was talking to me, and I think he was talking to all of us. He said, but you, Timothy, man of God, run your life. All, for, from all this, pursue a righteous life, a life of wonder, of faith, of love, and steadfastness and cur courtesy. Run hard and fast in the faith. Seize the eternal life, the life you were called to, the life you, were so, fer you so fervently embraced in the presence of so many witnesses. I'm charging you before the life-giving God and before Christ, who took his stand before Pontius Pilate and didn't give an inch, keep this command to the letter and don't slack off. In a way, I, I think that's one of my life verses. Just run. Don't stop. Don't quit. Just keep running. And then in 1 Corinthians 1, Again, in the Message Bible, it's a little different, but I love, I love how it puts it, verse 7, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, just think. You don't need a thing. You've got it all. All God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expectantly for our Master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the finale. And not only that, but God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until things are all wrapped up by Jesus. God, who got you started in this spiritual adventure, shares with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. That's not just for me. That's for all of us in just keep, keep trying, keep working, hang in there, don't stop. Uh, you know, I, I, sometimes I know it, it's good to, to, you know, to move somewhere else and to start a new. And I'm not saying that the, that we never need to do that. There are times when we need to do that. But uh, I think many times we just need to be the very best we can be, right where we are, where God has placed us at this time. So we tried to do that. If anything can be said, if you want to say anything about our lives, just say that guy, he just, he wouldn't quit. He didn't, he didn't move. He didn't get another church. He didn't go anywhere. You need to quit trying to get him to. <laughs> I had one lady tell me right there in front of the church. She said, I said, you don't like anything that I do, do you? She goes, no, I don't. And if this wasn't my church, I would never darken this door until you leave. 
What are you saying? And I'm just stubborn enough that it's like, okay, if, that, if that's what you want, I'm going to just, I'm going to wait you out. <laughs> and I did. I want to share with you a scripture. It's found in Psalm 92. Psalm 92. It's a lot of great stuff here, but I, we're going to, I want you to look at verse 12. I pray this will be true of my life. I pray this will be true of your life. And I'm not saying that I'm any better than anybody else. I'm not saying that I've never made mistakes. I'm not saying that I've never sinned. That's not what I'm trying to glorify here. I'm trying to glorify God. But it says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. Then they will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him. That's what I pray for my life. Just let me stay fresh and green. You know, I had somebody yesterday, I know they were lying, but it sure felt good. <laughs> you just don't look like you're old enough to have been married 50 years. And that, that's sweet. But th this is what I would like people to say. You know, even at an old age, young people in here would say I'm at an old age. Some of you who are about my age, you would say, no, he's got a long way to go, right? Yeah. All right. That <laughs> uh, they would say, you know, he, j he just stayed fresh and green. He just kept trying. He kept preaching. He kept doing what he could do. And may people say that about your life. That you didn't just, you know, get complacent. And you didn't get just, you know, to the point where you, you know, you don't care anymore. Or it doesn't seem important anymore. But that you stayed fresh. And you wanted to you wanted to be all that God wanted you to be. Even in old age. Even when your knees hurt. Even when it's hard to get up and down. Even when, even when sometimes people won't listen to you. That you just, you keep on plowing. You keep on going through it. God is so good. Uh, you know that really is the watchword of my life. I guess I guess I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a lot like a lot like Paul when he got toward the end of his life. He said, he said, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die would be great gain. Would be gain. He didn't say great gain. I added the great. But he said it would be gain. And I think that needs to be our attitude. As long as God gives me life, God gives me an ability, God gives me breath, we may, may not be able to do what we did when we were 20, but, you know, we have breath, we have life. As long as I have life, I'm going to live for him. I'm going to live for Christ. Let's all stand together. If God's speaking to you today, if there's some kind of decision you need to make, maybe you need to say, I don't have a testimony because I haven't yet asked Christ into my life. <coughs> maybe you need to know him today. Or maybe it'd be, may, it might be some other decision that God is just saying, listen, you need to hang in there. You need to fight the good fight. You need to keep, keep, keep it on. Don't give up. It might be that, that he uh, has something very special for you to do, like he had for us. We had a completely different idea of what our life was going to be. But God has allowed us to be pastor and wife, 
for 51 years. 51 years. So we're so thankful for that. And God may have something special for you. Maybe, maybe it's not to be a preacher. Maybe it's not to be a missionary. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not to play the piano. Like Jonah over here, he does such so good. Maybe not to sing, but maybe to be that that Christian at your work. To be that standard for people to look up to. To be that person in business that everybody goes, wow, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. Maybe that you need to be the only one in your family. Like I told you a little bit about my family. You need to be the only one in your family that that shares Christ, that loves the Lord, that serves the Lord. What does God want you to do? We give you a chance to come. Father, we just bow. We give you praise for everything. And God, we just ask that your will be done here in this place. We give you all praise for what you're going to do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, if you would, don't mind it. Every eye closed. What does God want you to do? What's your, what's God laid upon your heart?
else? Anybody else? You come. There's still time to come. If you need to sit down, that's fine. But I, I, if the Lord is speaking to your heart, if there's a decision you need to make, don't let this don't let this moment pass by. Don't let it pass by. Go ahead and be seated for just a moment. Um, I want to share with you, uh, and Jacob came forward today and said, I want to pray that prayer of salvation. And it just made me think of my, yeah, Jacob, come on up here, buddy. Uh, Jacob uh, has started coming back to church uh, just recently, and I don't know, uh, I, don't want you to, I don't want you to catch this clue, but I, I can tell who's listening. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I can't. There's just a blank stare on your face. But I can tell who's listening and who, who God's speaking to. You know, they're just like, wow, you know, this is this is real. This is for me. And I've seen this in Jacob's face uh, for several weeks. But he comes today and he wants to trust Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He prayed and asked Jesus to come into his heart and save him. And we'll be talking to him about baptism later. But if you agree with the decision that God has laid on his heart and you're going to pray for him, I want you to say a big amen. 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 And the Kasners, if y'all would come up here. Uh, this wonderful family has been with us uh, coming to church uh, uh, for a long time. And, uh, you know, when, when, when people come and they're just so pleasant and their kids are so well behaved and, and they know the Lord and they, um, they know scripture and I mean, you know, it, you know, you just think, well, you know, God is really working in their life and he is, but they come today to become officially to become a part of this church. And so, uh, they're going to move their membership here. Uh, Jacob and Nicholas, Julie, Jake and Tyler. Okay, and uh, we are so proud proud of all of them. And if you agree with their decision to become a part of this fellowship, and you're going to pray for them too, I want you to say a big amen. Amen. Douglas, would you come and stand with your son? Come on, Carly. I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm trying to be official here. I, I always call him that kind of uh, joke. All right. They're going to come and stand with him. Before you leave today, I want you to come by and welcome them into the fellowship of this church and let them know that, how proud that you are of the decision that they have made. And uh, maybe, maybe introduce yourself if you don't know them. So... Uh, God is working in a great way. Just keep praying. Good things are on the way. I believe it with all my heart. Amen. Father, you just you, you just dismiss us now with your love, and we pray that uh, you would be with Jacob and his walk with you, that you would be with the Kasner family as they made this decision, that, that we would be the church that we ought to be to them, that they would find their place in this fellowship, and we would just serve the Lord together. Father, we love you. We give you all praise and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.